Nicholas Griffin, Ping Pang Diplomacy, The Secret History Behind the Game That Changed the World. Welcome to the incredible story of how one man's passion for ping pang shaped world diplomacy. In Ping Pang Diplomacy, The Secret History Behind the Game That Changed the World, Nicholas Griffin introduces us to Ivor Montague, an English aristocrat who not only brought structure and prominence to the game of ping pong, but also used it as a means of fostering international relations between nations, especially between communist states and the Western world. Throughout the pages of this summary, you'll discover how Montague's dedication to ping pong unexpectedly opened doors to political dialogue and helped bridge the gap between estranged nations such as China and the United States. Ivor Montague and Ping Pong's Rise to Global Fame Ivor Montague, an English aristocrat, revolutionized ping pong and brought it from aristocratic pastime to the global stage. Montague's love for ping pong began when he was only six years old, and despite its lack of structure and rules, he remained passionate about the game. Moreover, Montague was also a socialist who worked with the Labour Party and was even caught storing copies of one of Lenin's books during his schoolboy days. Even though his pro-communist speech was discovered, his passions for ping-pong and socialism deepened during his time at Cambridge University. In time, ping-pong became an international sport and played a significant role in international politics. The Ping-Pong Pioneer Montague, a young man at Cambridge, established ping-pong's popularity by building tables and organizing tournaments. He became the chairman of the British National Ping-Pong Association where he wrote its official rules and made the game accessible to everyone by dissolving the association and forming the Table Tennis Association. He made the sport a nationwide phenomenon in the 1920s and even established the International Table Tennis Federation. Montague's contribution to ping-pong made him a pioneer of the sport and an instrumental figure in shaping the game. The Ping-Pong Spy At 21, Montague visited Soviet Russia, where he became a spy for the Kremlin and fed information to the Soviet embassy. He also promoted table tennis, which became a matter of both sports and politics for him. Over time, he hand over valuable data about British military capabilities and attempted to generate a positive view of communist states. Montague lobbied his colleagues at the International Table Tennis Federation to invite a Soviet team to the next world championships and started to look even further afield to the New People's Republic of China. Ping Pong Diplomacy By the early 1950s, ping pong had spread throughout China, even reaching high ranking communist officials like Mao and Zhou. Although the sport was popular, the Chinese players lacked skill. However, British player Ivor Montague saw the potential of using ping-pong as a diplomatic tool with the Chinese and sought to introduce the sport to China formally. Initially, officials in Beijing were hesitant due to their players' lack of ability, but they were impressed by Japan's success in using ping-pong for diplomacy. The Japanese team won both the World Championships in Britain in 1954 and in the Netherlands in 1955, despite initial hostility towards them due to Japan's actions during World War II. Japan's star player, Ichiro Ajimura, refused to raise the Japanese flag on the podium in London, and he even helped a Hungarian player to his feet during a match in the Netherlands. Ping Pong became a hit for Japan at home and abroad, and the Chinese state even bought a short film about Japanese table tennis produced by Ajimura. Ping Pong Diplomacy In the late 1960s, China and the United States were in need of closer relationships, and the Chinese government saw sport, specifically ping pong, as a way to promote diplomacy. In 1971, a Chinese team went to Japan for the World Championships, where an American player, Glenn Cowan, boarded their bus by accident. Despite tension and strict rules against interaction, Chinese player Zhuang Zhidong presented Cowan with a gift, and the moment was captured by photographers and published worldwide. This event, known as Ping Pong Diplomacy, played a key role in establishing relations between China and the United States. Victory in Ping Pong Diplomacy In 1961, 
the Chinese ping pong team prepared for the Beijing World Championships with an unprecedented investment in coaching and tactics, despite the famine and poverty ravaging the country. Mao's government used the championship as a means to distract from political turmoil, and the team's victory over Japan in the final was considered a triumph for the People's Republic. The Chinese players used a strategic ploy of deliberately losing to each other in the earlier rounds to better position themselves for the final. Ivor Montague, a key figure in the development of table tennis, witnessed China's success and recognized the potential for ping-pong diplomacy to provide a route to international acceptance for communist states. Ping-pong diplomacy In the late 1960s, China and the United States were in need of closer relationships, and the Chinese government saw sport, specifically ping-pong, as a way to promote diplomacy. In 1971, a Chinese team went to Japan for the World Championships, where an American player, Glenn Cowan, boarded their bus by accident. Despite tension and strict rules against interaction, Chinese player Zhuang Zhidong presented Cowan with a gift, and the moment was captured by photographers and published worldwide. This event, known as Ping Pong Diplomacy, played a key role in establishing relations between China and the United States. Ping Pong Diplomacy The book recounts the significant political breakthrough achieved when the U.S. table tennis team visited China. Ping Pong players acted as the most valuable diplomats, attending banquets, playing exhibition matches, and meeting Zhou Enlai. While the official response from Washington was apathetic, Nixon was pleased to see perceptions of China changing. The visit had changed things, and for the first time, most Americans supported China's UN membership. Ping Pong Diplomacy In 1971, U.S. National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger initiated secret talks with Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai to establish foundations for a future summit between Nixon and Mao. These conversations in Beijing went well, resulting in Nixon's famous summer 1971 televised announcement that he would visit China the following year. This historic meeting was made possible by ping-pong diplomacy, which had brought the United States and China together in ways that few believed were possible. The Chinese ping-pong team's visit to the United States and world champion Zhuang Zedong's diplomatic efforts helped bring China back into the world and led to a lasting change in relations between the two countries. As our exploration of Ivor Montague's life and the relevance of ping-pong in international politics comes to an end, it's evident how one man's enthusiasm for a seemingly simple game managed to create an unexpected route for international acceptance and diplomacy. Montague's determination to promote ping-pong across the globe provided communist nations with a means of showcasing their progress, while fostering friendlier relations with the Western world. In a time of tense international relations, the sport of ping-pong became an important catalyst for establishing dialogue and understanding between nations, proving that even the smallest of actions can have a profound impact on world history.